the women's division. Jumping in right here, first few seconds, and uh, this is a very, very exciting match. Gabby Pisania, I would say, is probably one of the only women that matches or you know comes close to matching Gabby Garcia's level of strength and power. Now, of course, she's still at a big um, disadvantage as far as the, the weight, as the specific weight goes, as, as far as the strength goes. I'm a little, I got a little distracted. I see Gabby looks yeah. like she may have hurt her fingers in one of those exchanges. Yeah. Yeah. May have twisted her hand or her wrist a little bit, not totally sure. You have to be very careful, though, what you say as far as injuries go in the match. Um, we've seen Gabby Garcia. Wow, collar big drag. collar drag yeah. for Gabriele Pisania. And she scores two. Gab Gabriele Pisania, one thing is that you will always, always see her team yelling and going crazy when she fights. The support she gets is incredible. Absolutely incredible. Wow, big positional control here, already close to the back, looking very calm too, Gabrielle is. Yeah, and she should be feeding that collar. She could feed that collar to the to the right hand right now so that that collar grips in. First hook in. Now, a lot of people have a hard time attacking Gabby's back because they're not able to get both hooks in at the same time, but Gabrielle Pisania is someone who can do it because the length of her legs is in proportion to the rest of her body is incredible. The way that she figure four and body triangles people with such ease from the guard, from the back, from you know the mount sometimes even on top yeah. is uh, is pretty special and unique. So if anyone can do it, it's her. She's gonna keep going back, uh, mount to the back. She's gonna try a clock choke right now. She wants the submission, yeah, you can see it. Clock choke's on, coming on here. That might be it. You know, if not, she's gonna go back to the back. She could put the left hook in, try a two collar bow and arrow. That big collar drag from Gabriele Pisania. That is a that is a technique we see her use a lot. Another person who's been very active on the AJP circuit while she wasn't able to get to the States too much, winning pretty much everything, including the World Pro. And it's not a surprise why. I mean, the fact that she is looking dominant this early on in a match with someone the caliber of Gabby is interesting. And interesting to see Gabby now grabbing her fingers together. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen that Obviously. too much before. She comes up, she's free. And now back to the feet. See this, it's, see, this is a very dangerous thing to do to speak to the ref about an injury. Because yeah, I'm not, I'm I have seen Gabby get DQ'd. I don't remember what year yeah. this was. I would believe it was a Pan Am final. And she spoke up about an injury to the referee, and the referee DQ'd her. We're going to review this that collar might, drag in that, a second. That, that might have been, been when it happened. Uh, you can't really tell what. She must have some sort of dislocated so collar drag. Wow, yeah. beautiful big takedown by Gabby yeah. uh, Gabrielli Pisania. Incredible, I, just the power she generates with that right hand, yeah. with that lap pull style. Uh, incredible. I, be, I believe she's got a dislocated finger or fingers, and it might have been from that. The first grip that exchange. That throw, think, that right? uh, that collar drag. She might have landed on her mm. hand. Well, the first time so, they went out of bounds, she said something about her. Yeah, finger. I, I think that I think that's that might have been what did something it. what happened. I believe that her finger was dislocated. Oh, that might be why and during I, the choke she went to. Gr oh, yes, that's right. that yeah. that doesn't look right. Yeah, that, I think, I think her finger was dislocated, and that's why she was trying to get it back into play. Maybe well, more was, than one finger. Yeah, yeah. she was grab. I was yeah. really wondering why she was yeah. grabbing her fingers while she was being choked, and yeah. she definitely was trying to adjust something yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, I mean, the reason I bring up the thing about speaking the ref, it's a real, it's a real concern. She, uh, she was DQ'd for that, I think, at the Pan Ams, yeah. uh, like a long time ago, right. like in the 2000s. Uh, yeah, but, I do remember. But she, uh, it's it's not to say that you know if you have a dislocated finger you got to put some tape on yeah, it. But it's I just mean, you have to be strategic about yeah. the way. Uh, and this comes back to re uh, what referees have at least told me is speak to your opponent. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if that's what happened, but it, 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 she's obviously having some real hard time. Like her her fingers are basically one more slow mo are, are, replay. Are balling up, you can see. Yeah, I don't My, think it was the throw no, when the fingers were so hurt. Either. I yeah. think it was the first time that they went right. out of bounds. Yeah. Um, because that was when she first started complaining about her. Yeah, you're right. You're right. She didn't fingers. hit. She didn't hit the fingers there. It would have been before that because you can see her hand is already. Mm -hmm. It was already in a ball. Yeah, already in, in a, ball. a fist. So I think when they went out of bounds, it must have been on a grip break. Like sometimes those can be really nasty when you have a strong yes, collar grip and right. they pop them yeah. off. Yep. Yeah, I've definitely heard my fingers doing that. Not quite to this level, but she definitely looks like she's in a lot of pain. Um, she'll continue though. There's a 7:45 left on the clock and. 
All right, so we're back in here. Wow, big guard pull to an elevation by Gabrielli, but not enough to score. And one of the things to know about Gabrielli Pisania, she might be one of the most composed competitors under pressure that we see. Yep. You know, no matter what is going on, it actually, <laughs> it actually uh, reminds me of how we talk about uh, Bouchesha and Leandro Lowe, kind of the classic, like, doesn't really matter what's on the scoreboard. They find a way to win in the end. We've seen that a lot from Gabby because Gabrielli has a lot of close matches with Yara where she scores in the end of the match and ends up winning. And matches like that against Nacelli de Jesus, um, who she started beating, and she's, you know, uh, open class world champion. Nacelli is incredible. Gabby, Gabrielli started beating her as a brown belt in AJP because the brown and black belt women are combined. And that was when we really saw how powerful Gabrielli Pisani was about to be on the black belt scene. Uh, anyone doing, anyone beating Nacelli was a big, big deal. Yeah, yeah. So very high caliber. She is yeah, not in this tournament right now. She just had a baby yeah, last week. congratulations to them. Which is like, so exciting. Yeah, great. So I'm sure she's watching here, <laughs> getting ready to make her return, excited probably. Wow, so now we see some big top heavy control from Gabby. So this could be, uh, this could be a turn. This could be a turn in the division, or sorry, in the match for sure. We also have another exciting match going on between Bianca, uh, sorry, Bia Mosquita and Margot Cicciarelli with Bia losing by one penalty right now, 7.20 left, and that's on map five, so just keep uh, your eyes and ears open if you see them in the background. Too many great matches yeah, to look at right now. <laughs> but we gotta stick to Gabby and uh, Gabrielli. This is really incredible now to see Gabby kind of changing the tide of the match. So now she's on top. So will she be able to go behind or capitalize from this top position and be patient and take her time and kind of use uh, the advantage that she has, or Will Gabby Pisania, which we're seeing now, be able to step up and kind of either regain her guard, she has an incredible guard, or come back to the standing to the top position, to the feet. Yes. Matt Seven has the featherweight division going strong. We got Gabby McComb um, and Michelle DeSantos Oliveira, followed soon by Chloe McNally and Elizabeth Clay, which is a great match in the medium heavy division. Followed by Anna Carolina Baby, um, so a lot of, and Bia Basilio, La Larissa Campos, definitely don't go anywhere. We're gonna be jamming for a while here on some of these matches. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a little more typical of what we see from Gabby Garcia, where she's able to get to these front headlock positions and kind of wear her opponents down. She'll go for some collar attacks here. Might start attacking a little bit of a guillotine. And the goal for here, when you're in this front headlock position, you have basically two options. You have the option to attack submissions from here, like front headlocks, chokes, uh, guillotines, or you have the upper, or, you know, crucifix, or you have the opportunity to go behind and start to attack the back. So those are really the two things that you're gonna look at uh, when you're in Gabby's position on top. Whereas Gabrielli Pisania either wants to break free of the hands and come up, which it looks like she's trying to do now, or recover the guard, which is what she ended up doing by sitting through and recovering to the close guard here. So there won't be any points awarded for that um, because it was a guard recovery from a front headlock. It wasn't a, t uh, a cleaner takedown by Gabby on top. So now we're resetting the close guard. Five minutes to go in this semifinals match. Gabrielli already feeding that lapel around. Probably gonna invert a little bit. There she goes, because underneath. Watch. Gabby Garcia's gotta watch triangles and Omoplata's we'll here if, if she really continues to invert and free that left leg. Yeah, I'm interested to see you know, it's interesting to see that Gabby hasn't tried to stand up and, uh, and pass yet, but at the same time, we know that Pisania has that lapel underneath with the right yeah. hand, and so if she does stand up, it's very easy for her to start to off-balance Gabby, mm -hmm. right? So Gabby might start to look at breaking that first. We know Gabby likes a Sao Paulo-style passing as well, so she may be looking to see when she's able to sprawl back. Hard to do that with Gabby's left foot so active, which she uses to come on top, and that is a very dangerous game to play for Gabby because that was very close to a reap, and if you reap, you will be DQ'd. Yep, she was able to do very nicely, get between the legs and come up, and, 
into wow. a very good attacking position here now. Comes up for the two and then also the four, and now we see her back in the mounted position going for the gift wrap, which will either lead to some submissions or it could potentially lead to the back again, which she initially got to earlier in the match. Right. With 3.20 left, a 12-point lead, very, very dominant. Yeah, so potentially what we could see is another rematch between Gabby Pisania and Yara Suarez. In on a nice choke here. Looks like this could be yeah, the finish. This could be it right Ar here. Armin Ezekiel. Really getting some good extension now, Gabby, and it's looking pretty, pretty tight. She's giving a thumbs up. Using her left foot to push on the hip is an interesting, uh, interesting detail. But this one gets tight over time. If you if she's got it right, you know, it gets tight over time. She gives up four more points, too, for that back. Right now, Gabby. With goes. this position, too, you can just apply so much pressure with the hips. And there is the tap from Gabby Garcia. Wow. Incredible win from Gabby Pisania. She will be in the finals of the Super Heavy in her first Black Belt World Championships. Definitely a clash of generations here we're seeing today. The legend and the up-and-comers. And, and uh, next up on this mat is going to be Yara Soares versus Mayara Casudio, which will determine the finalist against Gabrielle Pisania. We're going to move over to mat seven, though. We're going to see Chloe McNally versus Liz Clay. And Chloe McNally with a quick guard pull, you guys can see in the background here already, Liz Clay in the black E on top. And uh, this is the first time.